So I welcome you to worship here this morning and uh, pray that God will bless us as we meet together in his name. We're going to sing a familiar song to begin with. The song is number 49 in the songbook and it has that great chorus which says, How great thou art, O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder tomorrow, hopefully, thy power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul. If you want to stand, stand. If you don't want to stand, sit where you are. And let's sing together these verses. Thank you.
Thank you. Please sit down. I hope your mind went to all that imagery around that song, all the things that are around us that we see day by day, which really help us to understand and to know who God is and the greatness of God and his might and his power and his authority on all those great and wonderful things. But we're talking about journeying with Jesus. We're talking about seeing Jesus as our daily companion. And uh, Catherine Baird, Salvation Army uh, poetess, has written a number of years ago now, it's a beautiful song, which we're going to sing together as we, we focus in on our relationship with Jesus and our, our ability to commune with him and to pray with and to and that with Jesus. O oh, love revealed on earth in Christ. In blindness, once I sacrificed thy gifts for dross, I could not see. But Jesus brings me sight of thee. I come to thee with quiet mind, thyself to know, thy will to find. In Jesus' steps, my steps must be. I follow him to follow thee. And as we sing these verses through, may you engage and connect with God in Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit in these moments. When we've sung the verses through, then our meeting is open for prayer. And if you wish to offer a prayer, then please raise your voice in prayer for us all, please. Thank you. Let's sing. As we bring our prayers to Jesus, as we rest here and we, we seek to make ourselves comfortable in his presence, may the presence of God be with you. May you see God in Jesus through the pages of scripture and through your personal experience of being with him. 
and in the quietness of your mind. But for some, through your voice, please lift up a prayer that we may all share it and commune with God this morning. Thank you. Lord, sometimes if we're honest, we don't want to walk in the steps of Jesus. But just in this moment in time, we've been invited to remind ourselves of the journey that he made, and often those steps just simply were those that stepped into your presence, for he knew you to be his heavenly Father. And so for us this morning, Lord, may we be in those steps, those footprints that Jesus had as he walked with you. May we journey with you this day, Lord. May we have a sensitivity of your presence, your love, your care, not just for us, first of all, but for your creation, for your world, for your people here who need, as we all need, an awareness of you journeying with us. Lord, help us. Bless us, we pray. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. Is there another who wishes to pray this morning? Then let us all raise our voices together as we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And amen. So, have you journeyed with Jesus this week? Has anyone journeyed with him in a way that has been significant for you? And you might want to share that story briefly with us this morning. Don't forget, it's got to fit on the back of a postcard. Okay? So, is it... Is there anybody here, I must stop doing that, is there anybody here who wants to just share the story with their journey with Jesus this week? Anyone? Helena, I'll I'll be there in a moment, okay. Helena, your journey with Jesus this week. Yes. On uh, on Thursday, uh, I left uh, my room to go to the bathroom and I forget the key behind my, in my room. And uh, I was out calling my manager to come and open the door for me. And they didn't come almost 10 hours. Finally, I get sick and tired. So I prayed so hard. The answer was to call 999. I called 999 and they, uh, and I decided to ask them, fire, fireman, I call fireman, and the fireman came, he, he, he broke my window, he gave me in, and Jesus is great. That's, that's brilliant, that's a lovely story. I, I thought for a moment you were going to say that the whole house burnt down, but no, 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 that's, that's lovely. You know, I'll, be, I'll, I'll get to you in a minute, Andy, don't panic. I had a conversation with a lady this week who was really quite distraught and distressed. And uh, she said to me, I've been praying so hard, really praying so hard, and nothing ever seemed to happen. And eventually she picked up the phone. And she spoke with me, and I was able to redirect her and signpost her to another agency that would would help her more than, than I or we, we could. And I spoke to her again at the end of the week and she said, it was so much better. 
She felt so much better. And I said, you know what you did, didn't you? You prayed and God put that idea in your head that you ought to pick up the phone and phone somebody. And you did. Sometimes I think we ask for God's divine intervention and fail to notice actually it's us that might be the answer to the prayer. Andrew. Um, This week, uh, me, Holly and Isabel have been on holiday down in Cornwall. Um, and we stayed in Port Isaac, which is the first time I've ever been there. Very beautiful place. Um, but uh, I kind of want to uh, put a, a bit of perspective in for the holiday. So uh, my work life is pretty busy. It continues to be pretty busy. Um, and 2022 has been a bit of a roller coaster year for me. Um, but last week, for the first time this year, really, um, every day I was able to... Um, do a sustained, um, I've got a little book which is uh, a three minute devotion book Um, and every day this week I've been able to do that at the start of the day before going out to the various places that we went to in the different beaches. But last Sunday we were down in um, Polzeath Beach Um, and as we were there enjoying um, the sea, sand and sun, um, I don't know if you know Polzeath but up on the hill there is a church. Um, and their service was outside in the garden area. Um, they had loads of people. Um, and what was great about it was that there was music glorifying God just being played um, full whack, really, is the best way of putting it, um, across the whole beach. Um, and it really was nice to sit on the beach, looking out to sea, blue sky, but with worship music and people glorifying God all around us. Even though we weren't here, we were with God, and that was great. That's great. Thank you, Andrew, for that. Lovely. Um, there, are, there are four people here who've had a really great week. Well, they, they might not think so, and they're going to be really, 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 really cross with me now. Four, guys, can you just come out here a moment, please? And show me how small I am. (laughs) Yeah. You see? You see, Elliot, I don't mind standing next to you. Dylan, you're okay. I'll move across a bit. But So, these four fellas, where have you been? To work at the Divisional Summer School this week. Right, and where was it? Ledbury. <laughs> and how long was it on for? Uh, six days. And did you sleep for any of them? Uh, not really. Okay. <laughs> okay. How many times have you been to a summer school? That was my fifth real one, sixth if you count the online COVID thing. Oh, virtual summer school, eh? Hmm. Curious. What about you, Luke? Four. Four? I don't know. A lot? I don't know. You don't know? You lost count? I don't know. Yeah? Two? Two. Okay. Sorry, let's go back. Recount. Three. Three. Well done. (laughs) Brilliant. Just very briefly, okay, back of a postcard, remember? Okay, we don't want a life story, all right? But what was your highlight of your week at summer school this week? Are you ready to go or do you want time to think? Time to think. Ready to go, time to think. Ready to go, time to think. Disco. Disco? Disco. Okay, do you want to throw some moves? On? Okay, fine, fine. Uh, The laser tag. The what? The laser tag. Laser tag? Have you two thought of anything yet? I think all of it was really fun, but I think the best bit was between disco and laser tag. Disco and laser tag. I like the campfire we did. You like fire. Okay. (laughs) Helena's got a number if it gets out of hand, okay. And just putting it out there, please be careful. The grass is tinder dry. Do not light fires where they shouldn't be lit. Out of all this that that happened, I guess it must be, is this the first time back since lockdown? Second. Second time, but the first one was a bit strange, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. But you got back with, with some friends that you've made from years gone and some new friends. Well, you made some new friends, I guess. 
And all of it was about that sense of bonding together and unity in that way. Did you get to play a brass instrument? That's what a load of... They're, they're hanging on the every word, OK? Yes, we had three band practices of two hours each for a week. Three? God, you got off lightly, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, all those... You see, just look around a moment. All these folk up here in the band who used to go to things like band camps, OK? The clue's in the title, isn't it, really? It was a band camp, OK? And it was 7 o'clock in the morning would be practice, first practice. 6 o'clock in the morning, well, you obviously needed it more than others. <laughs> Six in the morning till last thing at night. Play, play, play. Did you did you play? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Did you play? No. No. Did you play? Yes. That's okay. I'm, that's pretty much what I expected the responses to have been. So that was good. But this is the key. Did you have times like Andy was saying? Did you have quiet, times of quietness and reflection and Bible reading and study? Yeah. Did Did you get all that? as an element of the week, okay? You know, as we go through our meeting this morning, we're gonna look at balance in life. And it's okay having, having discos, well, for some of you it might be okay having discos, but not for others. Laser tag, maybe, okay? I'm getting too old for that kind of thing. Um, but fellowship and music and Bible study and all that kind of thing, they're great. So I'm, I'm really glad you had a great week, okay? So you may return to your seats, please, all right, and prepare for whatever else the meeting is going. But I'm glad they had a really good time. I've, um, I think we'll get the band to play something, shall we? To show how these years and years of practice have um, brought about this end result. Fortunately, I've chosen something that is well known to us and hopefully will do justice this morning. Um, it's the setting of Jesus Loves Me. Let's all sing together, shall we? Song is number 396 in the songbook. 396. 
some gathering together of musicians. Now, here's a, here's a song from a while ago now. Um, some of you may know this, some of you may not. But we're going to sing, There are hundreds and thousands, is the song, the Hundreds of sparrows, thousands, millions, they're to a penny, far too many there must be. Hundreds and thousands, millions of sparrows, but God knows everyone, and God knows me. We'll sing the four verses straight the way through, please, once the musicians are set. Excellent. Do you remember that song? Some of you will have sung it. It came from a musical called Takeover Bid. And there were, th in the original production, there were three brothers who sang that. It was, I'm not sure it was actually written for them, but it was, it was sung by three brothers. And one was, well, I can tell you now how old this was, but one, the oldest brother, was a couple of years older than me, about the age of my older brother. One was about my age and one was a little younger and they sang in a row, okay? The hundreds and thousands, millions. And at the end, when we had God knows everyone and God knows me and me and me went the song, okay? It was Trevor Caffell at the end, by the way. I thought I'd just let you know. Um, Isabel... Do you have a favourite colour? What's your favourite colour? Green. Green? Come here then, quickly. Come here quickly. Hold that tray. Okay? Where's my bag? Do you know what these are? You see, this meeting is not thrown together. You know that, don't you? Okay? Well, do you know what are these? <laughs> hundreds and, and thousands. thousands. Hundreds and thousands, you see. So don't drop the tray. Okay? Don't drop the tray. We, we might have a vacuum cleaner on standby at the moment. Okay? Find your favourite colour. Is there, is there a green one? You sure? I'm sure there was. I thought, I thought there was one in there. If you shake it around a bit, then they... What colours are there? There's blue, yellow, pink and white. And red? Yeah, a red. So if you wanted to make green, what would you do? Add yellow and blue. Yellow and blue. Let's, let's try that, shall we? Get a yellow and a blue one. Let's talk amongst yourselves a minute. Okay. This, is, this is not great for television. And crush them together. Does it make green? No, that's orange. That's not yellow. No. no wonder it didn't work. Okay. You see, do you know how many there are on this tray? No. Well, there's got to be hundreds and thousands, hasn't there? Yeah? I mean, it's not like we're trying to guess how much popcorn there is in a jar or anything, is it? Okay? 
that's easy when it comes to this. Okay? This, this, is, this is difficult. But every one of those is different, isn't it? Every one of those is unique. It's not working, it's not working is it? Do you know what? If, are you happy being Isabel? Yeah. Okay, but what if you wanted to be somebody else? Who would you be? Um, Seb. You want to be Seb? <laughs> Trust me, I wouldn't think about it. No, okay. <laughs> you know, but you can't just try and crush things together and make things different because you are you and you are special and you are unique. Okay? And like the song says, God knows everyone and God knows and Yes. Okay, let's try that again. God knows everyone and God knows... No, no. God knows everyone and God knows... No, who am I pointing? Ye and... And you. Yes, yes. It's very confusing, isn't it? Hey, isn't it good that we have a God who is so wonderful and big and mighty that he knows all about us? And he loves us just the same. Jesus loves me. It's what the band have just played, isn't it? Now, hundreds and thousands. And Jesus loves me. And now we're going to sing this song. Okay? And now we're going to sing this song. Our God is a great big God. And he holds us in his hands. You know this chorus? Do you know this chorus, Mike? Would you like to come and help with the actions? Anybody else want to sort of stand up, do some actions? Circulate a bit of air. Here we go. Here we go. Excellent, thank you. Do you want to put all the hundreds and thousands back in the jar, or should we leave that for later? Leave it for later. Jolly good idea. Thanks, Isabel. You may go and sit down again. Here's the on screen now is the passage of scripture that we're going to be thinking about this morning. Just uh, just a few verses here. And we're talking about Sabbath. I'm going to go back onto this mic now. We're talking about Sabbath. And this is from the Gospel according to St. Mark in the second chapter. And uh, reading from verses 23 through to 28. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the cornfields. And as his disciples walked along, they began to pick some ears of corn. The Pharisees said to him, look, why are they doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? And Jesus answered, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need? In the days of Abiathar the high priest, he entered the house of God 
and he ate the consecrated bread, which is lawful only for priests to eat. And he also gave some to his companion. And he said to them, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Have you ever gone walking through a cornfield? Have you ever felt the inclination to pick a head of corn and to eat it? I'm not entirely sure. But it was, it was lawful to go into a field and to, take, to glean some of the, the corn there. Um, we, we see that time and again in, in the Bible, particularly in the, in the story of Ruth in the Old Testament, where she was allowed to, to glean in the, in the cornfields of Boaz. What you weren't allowed to do was to, to take any kind of mechanical implement or tool if it wasn't your field. You were allowed to just glean with your hands. But this happened on the Sabbath. On their, the, for, for the Jewish nation, it was between sunset on the Friday and sunset on the Saturday, as we know our calendar these days. This Sabbath rest was something that the disciples of Jesus learned as they journeyed with him. And in our journey with Jesus, as people who are seeking to follow him, we need to learn this lesson and learn it early and learn it well. Of course, the, the instruction or the model of Sabbath started right at the very beginning. And we read in Genesis in chapter 2 and the second and third verses that when God had finished making all that he made in creation, he then rested on the, third, on the seventh day. It was that day which was set apart for a cessation from toil. We live, if we're not careful, in a 24-7 world. Have you noticed that? Or has it crept up on you unexpectedly? We live in a 24-7 world. I mean, heaven forfend, we even have 24-7 prayer. I say that tongue-in-cheek. But there are some people who the world has brought upon them the requirement for 24-7 availability and work. And I just issue a word of caution, for that is not God's way. That's not what God wants of us, to be constantly on the go, constantly in pursuit. I was brought to mind when we, we had the, the grandsons staying for a couple of days this week and the, the whole going to bed in daylight. Do you remember that as a child? I think every adult has that same sense of we go to bed when the sun's still up. But you see, when we've introduced things like electricity for those who can afford it, then we can have daylight all the time. We don't have to switch off. We don't have to, to stop working. Jesus on one occasion said to his disciples, I must do the work of God while it is daylight for the night comes when no one can work. And imagine being out there miles from anywhere and certainly no, no electricity in those days. No artificial light. It was only what the sun and the moon provided or perhaps a, a weak torch could give. But that wouldn't last forever. And so there was this rhythm of day and night, of work and rest. And then came this whole idea of Sabbath, modelled by God, commanded by God, for in Exodus chapter 20, when we read the Ten Commandments, the fourth of those commandments is to remember the Sabbath and to keep it holy, holy to God. It's a gift to us that we don't have to be working all the time. It is a blessing, not a burden. But if I'm going to be speaking of things that remind us that God is at 
in control of our world and in control of us and we need to journey with him, then it has to be that God wants us to have this rhythm of work and rest. For if, if it was all one thing constantly, then it will be difficult for us to sustain that. I want to conclude these thoughts in a moment, but concentration I know is difficult in this heat. So I'm going to invite the songsters to gather and sing for us, please. Just take that thought, ever, only, all for thee. Beautiful words, so important that we remember that in the context of Sabbath rest, as I'm going to just speak briefly now, we remember that it is all for Jesus. Thank you, songsters. Can I just say one last thing, and that is, in some way, 
a little bit of a warning. You see, the, the Pharisees that criticized Jesus and his disciples for working on the Sabbath had taken this one day of the week and they had made it something it was never intended to be. It became a burden because of all the, the laws and the regulations that surrounded it. And sometimes there is a, a danger that we can compress all our God time into our Sunday as a Christian. We can squeeze everything into this day. Anything to do with God, oh, this is God's day. This is the Lord's house. This is where we offer our devotion to him. I would like you, I would like you to become familiar with the rhythm of constant companionship with Jesus on the journey. That it, because he said, the Sabbath was made for you, not the other way around. You weren't created to make this lovely day. This lovely day was created for you. And Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath, yes. But he should be Lord of every day of our lives. I, I, I guess for many of us, because of this 24-7 type of life that the world around seeks to squeeze us into, Romans, J.B. Phillips' translation, I think in, in despite of that, we need to rediscover the rhythms of life. There are, there are books about, written about this. I have any number either on my bookshelf on my Kindle, or there's one called Seeking Sabbath by Reverend David Shepherd, which I am still seeking, and I've either given it away or, or borrowed, lent it to somebody. Um, great book. This one, constantly been a companion of mine for many years. When I relax, I feel guilty. Specifically written, I think, for Salvation Army officers, but could be for anyone in particular. Okay? Tiny Horsefalls, find this Rhythms of Grace, beautiful book. And on my Kindle, I'm not even going to bother showing you my Kindle, you know what a Kindle looks like, is uh, Dr. Matthew Sleeth has written a, a great book. It's from a medical, but a Christian medical perspective, called, and it's, it's called 24-6. 24-6, Prescription for a Healthier Life. These are helps but the greatest help we can have is just to rest in the presence of God. Work when you have to work. When, when, when it demands it from you, then as a Christian, put all your energies and efforts into the things that you have to do in your life. But make space for God to journey with Jesus every day and make Sabbath special with him. If you've just begun your journey with Jesus, or whether it's something that you have been pursuing for many, many years, come to this point and allow this day, this moment, whenever that is, to be a place where you're put in mind of Jesus with you and you journey with him. The songwriter has said that this is the day of light. Let there be light today. It's song 67 in our songbook. This is the day of rest. This is the day of peace. This is the day of prayer. If you're following the, um, the words in the, in the songbook, we're singing the first four verses. Just allow these words to soak in upon you and make this your resolve for the days which lie ahead. Let us sing together.
my prayer for you is that this day and every day, as you journey with Jesus, you may find it a day of light, of rest, of peace, of prayer, to counteract all the, the intense things that have to fill our lives by necessity. And in all these things, may we find the presence of God. May you find the presence of God where you are. Bless you, each one. God is a great God. He has made a beautiful world. He has set the rhythm of that world in place. And so we conclude our worship together. Again, reflecting on the greatness of God and in some ways what the songs has brought to us a little earlier in our meeting, where we sing 380 in our songbook, Lord of creation, to you be all praise. If you're able, I invite you to stand and we sing the verses through. Thank you. <laughs> As you walk in the presence of Jesus, as you journey with him in these days, may you know strength to work and times to rest. And in this rhythm, in this balance, may your life be in tune with him and go in his name, in the name of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, to love and to serve him. Amen.